What's up YouTube? Cliff here from the Sunday Drive and today we're replacing both the rotors and the pads on my 2014 Silverado. So before we started the video, I just wanted to say and throw out a preface, these are not the brakes we're installing. These actually might have been the ones I removed from my truck. Nah, they're a little small. But um, we shot this video three and a half years ago, um, so you will see some things on the truck that are a little different. Um, believe it or not, we have a ton of content shot that we have not had time to edit. I know that sounds unbelievable, um, but yeah. So three and a half years later, finally getting the brake change video, a very basic video up on this truck. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, but we have a lot coming. We are really excited to update you guys. I don't want to give too much away, but we've had a little bit of stuff going on. So definitely be tuning into the channel. A lot of big things happening and looking forward to what the future brings. Now I went with Acab now I <laughs> now I went with Acabono brake pads. Um, these had seem to have the most consistent reviews uh, online for quality. So this is what I went with. For the rotor, I went with the CarQuest a platinum painted rotor. And the reason for paint is well, number one, it just looks better and it also won't rust. So your tire is not gonna get stuck on there when you go to take it off. So a little bit of a side benefit and they were about the same price anyway. So we'll see how they hold up and gonna compare the thickness to the rotors that are coming off the truck and see how they compare. Step one, never mind. <laughs> First, we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper. There's two 18 millimeter bolts that hold it from the back. Now we'll go ahead and pull off the caliper and just set that up out of the way, being careful not to pull or pinch the brake line. Now we're gonna get rid of the brake pads, pull those out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper bracket. This is held in by two 18 millimeter bolts, one right here and one up top. And pull off your caliper bracket. To remove your rotor, you need to remove this T30 Torx bolt. And the rotor should just come right off. So my truck has 75,000 miles and these are the original brake pads. Let's see how they compare to the new ones. So my inside brake pad just under three millimeters, 2.9 millimeters left, while the outside pad has 4.46 millimeters left. So there's still some life left in these front pads. However, my back pads have been squealing really bad, and that's kind of the reason for the brake change, so also changing my fronts at the same time. In comparison, the new brake pad is 10 millimeters. So here's the rotor that just came off the truck. Again, 75,000 miles on this as well, never been recut. Um, the outside is actually in pretty good shape. Inside is not terrible, but you're starting to have some even uneven wear on the outside edges. Now it's kind of hard to see because the inside of these rotors are really corroded, but the numbers, the actual minimum depth or width of this rotor is printed on the inside. So if you're ever wondering if it's safe to recut your rotor, you can consult that number on the inside of your rotor. It's a good idea to take a picture of this when you put your new rotors on so that you know how thick they have to be and you can possibly recut them in the future. So the aftermarket rotor is the exact same thickness as my rotor with 75,000 miles. Now this doesn't necessarily mean this rotor is inferior. Rotors just do not wear down as much as the brake pads. Before installing the new rotor, I'd like to take some white lithium grease and coat the wheel hub with that. This will help you remove your rotor in the future. New brake rotors usually come with a protective oil coating to keep them from rusting. You wanna clean this off. I'm just gonna use some brake lean. Before reinstalling the retaining screw, I like to coat this with a little bit of anti-seize. If this ever gets stuck in there, you'll know the pain of having to drill one of these out. And then just lightly put this back in. Now, Akabono includes all of the new 
brake hardware that you need to replace everything. So go ahead and remove these old clips right here. Use a pick tool, pry the old ones out. and then just pop the new hardware in place. Now you're gonna to wanna to pull out these sliding pins. You're gonna to wanna to give these a fresh coating of Ultra Disc Brake Caliper Lube. This is from Permatex. I'll have a link in the description of this video. Your brakes slide in and out on these, so you wanna have a liberal coating so that these parts don't wear. and just pop those back in. All right, now we can go ahead and reinstall the caliper bracket. So I've done brakes on a lot of vehicles and this is my first time seeing a thread locker on the caliper bracket bolts. Um, what I've always done is put anti-seize on these because these are definitely exposed to the elements and you don't want these to corrode. Um, it can be a huge pain getting these out if they do. So up to you, you can either use a thread locker again on here. I personally am gonna be using anti-seize. And you don't need a lot of anti-seize, just a little bit to keep these from locking up on you. A little bit on that other bolt. Always start any of your bolts by hand. Make sure they're not cross-threaded. Then I'm going to put them in with the impact gun and then finish them up by hand. When going to install your new brake pads, note that this is your inside brake pad. This is your outer brake pad. The backing plate is flat across the bottom. On the outside one, it's curved. Always like to coat the ends right here where they slide with a little bit of that same caliper lube. Make sure you don't get this onto the brake pad surface itself or onto the rotor. <laughs> Once these are on, coat the back with some caliper lube. This will help you slide the caliper back on. Now we need to go ahead and retract these pistons back into their housing. Uh, because the pads we just took off were worn down more, the pistons are further extended and they will not allow us to fit them back over these new thicker pads. You can either rent a tool like this to accomplish this. This is from my local auto parts store. It was $60 and they refund you that when you return it or you can just use a C-clamp like this and either of these will work. If you're gonna use this tool, you place this backing plate over the top right here. Then select a plate that'll fit over top of your piston. Place this between the outside of your caliper and the piston and simply tighten down to retract the piston. Now the bad thing about doing this is it's only pushing one of the pistons in it at a time. With the C-clamp, you can take one of your old brake pads, set that across both pistons, and you can tighten down on both of your pistons at the same time. You can see that the pistons are now flush with their housings and you can go ahead and slide your caliper in place. Just push these bolts back in up top and the bottom and slide that on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and coat these bolts with anti-seize as well. And these bolts did not have any thread locker on them. And then tighten them down to spec. And that's your front brakes done. Let's go on to the back. First, we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper. Now, there's a slight difference with this. Number one, it uses 13 millimeter bolts, and there's also a nut on the inside that you have to hold. It's larger than any of the wrenches I have, so I'm using an adjustable wrench on it. There's plenty of room to get on it with an adjustable, um, so you don't have to worry about stripping it out or anything. And these are not torqued down very tightly.
and slide your caliper off. And set that up top out of the way. Again, being careful not to pinch your brake line. Go ahead and remove the brake pads. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper bracket. This is held in by 18 millimeter bolts. I may need your help on this again, Pete. And you may need a friend. There you go. Those are held in pretty tightly. Unfortunately, there's not enough room to get the impact gun in here. That would make this job a lot easier. And just hold on to the uh, bracket so it doesn't fall down. Now your back rotors do not have the same retaining screw that the front ones did. Instead they have these uh, clips over top of two of the studs. You can sometimes thread these off. You're supposed to be able to. If not, you can just cut them off or break them because they're not really needed. You want to kind of pull towards you as you twist and that helps it come off. A pair of gloves with this is definitely helpful too. This is the stupidest thing. Why not just have a screw? There. Now in theory, this should come right off, but it never does. Now when removing this, you want to make sure your e-brake is disengaged because there is a cable that connects up to your e-brake uh, inside of here. And you don't want that to be holding your rotor in place. However, my e-brake is disengaged. So what you want to do is take the bolt that you removed from your caliper and thread it in right here. And right here. Now we're going to evenly tighten these two bolts up to push the rotor off of the hub. There you go. Oh no, they're stuck. All right, so looking at the brake pads I just took off, again, 75,000 miles on these, definitely starting to wear on the edges, and they're definitely not as smooth as they should be. Uh, there's some ridges appearing in them. All right, so this is two millimeters, and I believe they both are about the same. And the inside pad is 1.65 millimeters. So these are definitely end of life. These were squealing pretty good in the back. The new brake pads are nine millimeters, so at least seven millimeters thicker than the brake pads that are coming off. Now, unlike the front rotor, I do not see a minimum thickness printed onto this one. It could be that it's just so corroded I can no longer see it, but I don't see any numbers on this one. But let's just see how thick it is. Now, there's less of a lip on the back rotor, so I am able to get my caliper around it. This is 20 millimeters. All right, the new one is 20.1 millimeters. So it's about a tenth of a millimeter thicker. Now, just like with the fronts, your rotors are not gonna wear that much. Obviously, this can vary depending upon the brake pad material you're gonna use, but in general, your rotors are gonna wear at a much slower rate than your pads. My rotors aren't in terrible shape. I'm gonna get those recut and save those until the next time, coat them in some oil so they're still good to go, and that way I don't have to buy another set of rotors. You can see how rusted the rear hub is right here. Definitely want to put some lithium grease onto that. And if you have the time, you could sand this down.
Go ahead and remove your pins. Coat those with caliper lube. And push them back into the seals. Take off the old mounting hardware. Careful not to stab yourself. And install the new mounting hardware provided by Akabino. Go ahead and reinstall your caliper bracket. Unlike the front, both the inner and outer pads are exactly the same. Go ahead and coat the ends. And then coat the backside again to help the caliper to slide on better. And go ahead and compress your piston. Go ahead and slide your caliper back on place. and reinstall the caliper bolts. That's it guys, go ahead and throw your back tire on, torque the lug nuts down to 140 foot pounds and you're done. Well, you may still have the other side to do, but I'm done. Thank you guys for watching. If this is your first time tuning in, please consider subscribing. We have over 20 videos up on my Silverado and a lot more coming. So if you guys need to do, know how to do any maintenance and what upgrades you can do, definitely a good channel to stick around for. So. We will see you guys here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And before you leave, so we installed these brakes when I had 75,000 miles on the truck, as I think I said like 30 times in the video, unfortunately. Um, and it's 55 or so thousand miles later, the brakes are still holding up extremely well. I have no issues, um, no like jerking or stuttering when I come to a stop, no squealing. Everything seems to be working very well. Um, so I'll definitely, uh, update you guys when I do have to swap these brakes out. Um, and as you saw in the video, the front brakes on my tr truck probably had another 10, 15, 20,000 miles in it. That is gonna vary a lot depending on if you tow a lot and your driving style. If you drive aggressive and tend to brake hard, your brakes are probably gonna wear out even under 50,000 miles. So um, your miles may vary. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we are gonna have some updates on the truck very soon. I'll try to shoot an update video um, and tell you what's going on. Yes, we are still gonna be dynoing it. Um, we hit a bit of a snag with that that was outside of our control. Nothing wrong with the truck, but the shop we were using, we had a problem. So, um, but we will update that in the next video. So thanks for watching, guys.